right everyone and welcome to the Highland Collector YouTube channel. Now 2023 has been a rather exciting year for the Black Series. Admittedly it did start off a little rough, but Hasbro and the team still managed to release over 100 different figures for this line this year alone, with some of them being truly amazing, some of the best 6 inch Star Wars figures we've ever gotten, whilst others on the other hand, well, I'll put it kindly, were not so amazing. And because I wasn't really uploading for pretty much the entirety of the first half of the year, yeah, sorry about that. There were many releases I didn't really get to go over and talk about on this channel. And with us now nearing the end of the year, I thought it would be fun to quickly sum up every Black Series 2023 release in just one sentence or so to give you my quick and honest thought on everything we've received this year, from standard figures to exclusives, multi-packs and more. However, as you may know, Hasbro's releases for Black Series Waves can be kind of messy, which made doing this video a nightmare, as everyone has differing opinions on what figures came out when, due to Waves showing up months before they're supposed to arrive. So with that in mind, there is a chance I have missed some figures, but I think I got them all because for the most part, I went off of this checklist compiled by Action Figure News and Reviews. But yeah, that's more than enough waffling from me, so let's begin. And since 2023 marks the 40th year of Return of the Jedi, it'll be rude not to start with the anniversary figures. And we're kicking it off with everyone's favourite, Skiff Guard Lando. Now we definitely did not need a third Skiff Guard Lando. I mean don't get me wrong, it's a good figure and the card back's nice, but to me three of this guy in under five years is complete overkill. More repacks incoming as we have also seen these Endor variants of Han and Leia twice before in Galaxy Boxes and also that Heroes of Endor set. This one here is also another repack, but then again, it's always nice to see a return of a Jedi biker scout, especially for the anniversary considering they are the quintessential trooper of that film. The return of a Jedi Boba Fett is one of the greatest deluxe figures of all time, so I'm not mad we saw a release of him on card back this year, and the same can be said for the Gamorrean Guard too, as that is also a top tier figure. But now we are already at one of the best figures of the year in my opinion that being Wicket W. Warwick, who has been so long overdue and definitely does not disappoint as he looks amazing, especially on that card back. Yeah, I do think the standard price of £24 is a bit rough considering he is a very small figure, but despite that, he's still awesome. And this is just the same Wicket in Galaxy packaging. This Episode 6 Chewbacca is also cool, although that body is nearly a decade old. That new head sculpt gives him his curtains and also a chain that unfortunately is moulded in, which does hinder this figure's overall usage. And this is just the same Chewbacca in Galaxy packaging. But speaking of repacks, we have even more, as Pat Blue got a re-release on Carbat this year, which I think is actually the best free pack and is really exciting as for far too long has this Ewok been exclusive to that Heroes of Endor multi-pack. We also saw Palpatine again which would have been way better if Hasbro actually upgraded it more and included his lightning hands and an extra head too maybe. Bib Fortuna also got himself a repack, but as great as this figure is maybe his slot should have gone to someone else as that original figure still isn't selling too well. And this here is just a repack of a standard Stormtrooper but he is on the 2020 body so I'll allow it. But now we're on to the Endor Commando, and he's definitely a contender for one of the greatest figures of the year, as it looks so good with accessories like the swappable head, yet it confuses me how this is deluxe when the Hoth Rebel Soldier wasn't, as the Endor one is much more expensive when it contains the same amount of accessories. Something weird's definitely going on there, Hasbro. Moving on, also as a part of the 40th anniversary for Jedi, R2-D2 saw a massive upgrade with this awesome new mould that allows Astromex to be more in scale with the rest of the line, which is great, and this is just the same R2-D2 in Galaxy Packaging. The Episode 6 Throne Room Luke, although simple, is maybe one of the greatest Lukes we've gotten recently. The articulation is top notch and I also love that swappable chest piece. The Vader is pretty great too, although I hear the two part helmet can be a little annoying. The highlight of this one is definitely that phenomenal new Sebastian Shaw head sculpt. And to wrap up the main anniversary waves for Jedi, we also saw a Royal Guard 2, which has some small adjustments to make the soft goods easier to remove. And now a disappointment to many collectors worldwide is that 2023 saw the revival of the Carbonized line, with their return from the dead coming in the form of this shiny Amazon exclusive set of two, including a Royal Guard and a TIE Fighter pilot. Now that TIE Fighter pilot is just decent, but the blue colour is reminiscent to that Vader, however I do really like the shiny guard just because I love that metallic red they use, that just gives stiff trooper vibes, but as cool as that that figure is to me it's nowhere near as exciting as the Jabba the Hutt re-release which is just incredible to see again as now everyone can get him with the inclusion of Salacious B Crumb and also the Hookah and the Rail 2. Another awesome 40th anniversary deluxe multi-pack came in the form of this Force Ghost 3 pack which was definitely a standout. Although we have gotten spirit versions of Obi-Wan and Yoda before, the addition of Anakin is more than welcome as now we can finally complete the trio. However, it would have been even better if they had included a swappable Sebastian Shaw head for Anakin, in addition to the Ewok Village bridge, because that thing was plastered all over the packaging yet wasn't included. But now we're on to the final Jedi figure, which is also one of the weakest of the entire year for me. 
and it's the revenge of the Jedi Vader, which is just Vader but red. As the paint job for this exclusive Vader was meant to be a homage to the Revenge of the Jedi poster, however it just comes off looking a bit like a shitty credit collection figure, and also on the poster Vader has a blue lightsaber and the figure has a red one, so they failed in that regard. But at least the packaging is cool, I guess. Okay, now it may have taken a while, but we're finally finished with Return of the Jedi. But we did also get another anniversary celebration this year with the Clone Wars that turned 20, in which we saw three figures released under that branding, the first being this incredible new Padawan Ahsoka, which is now contender for the best Ahsoka in the line. And unlike her box art, this figure is an incredible representation of her animated look, with a great new head and shorter stature, this one's pretty much perfect in every way. Along with Ahsoka we also finally saw a standard phase 2 clone, but what's really exciting about this one is that he introduced a new 2023 clone body that improves upon the 2021 by adding amazing new upgrades like a bicep swivel, making the torso and chest piece separate along with the shoulder and knee pads, which all combine to make for one truly outstanding clone trooper figure. And yet there was one massive letdown of the three and that was of course the Magna Guard. That does admittedly have some epic new moulds and definitely looks the part, but one massive complaint is that he's just way too underscaled. Now we were all ecstatic when pre Vizsla was first pipelined, yet the decision to use that old out of date Django Fett body deprived us of what could have been a truly phenomenal figure. Similarly, Art Trooper Jesse is another figure who had been rumoured and hyped up for years, yet the final product left a lot to be desired. The body looks great, don't get me wrong, but it's the inaccuracies in the helmets which leaves this one looking a little shit. But the new head sculpt is good, so if you display him without the helmet, he looks rather decent. And the same can also sadly be said about Fives, who was another highly requested Art Trooper who I'm glad we finally got, yet Hasbro once again let us down when it came to the printing on the helmet. So yeah, despite the fact we got a ton of long overdue Clone Wars characters for the first time, unfortunately many fell a little short of expectations. But moving swiftly on to the gaming greats, we are beginning with some bangers. Now honestly I'm not too familiar with Knights of the Old Republic, but I can appreciate an amazing action figure when I see one, and this Bastille Lashand looks stunning. I really do love the design here, and this also marks our first time getting yellow bladed lightsabers in the Black Series too, which is pretty nice. And to go with her of course we also got Darth Malak for the first time too, who is arguably even better, as his red paint really pops, not to mention the nice soft goods included too, but the highlight here is hands down that removable mask, which comes off to expose this creepy yet incredible head sculpt. Now unfortunately we did only see one Jedi Survivor figure released this year, which is this new Cal Kestis, who may not have the most exciting outfit, yet the likeness here is spot on and the articulation is second to none. Based off of Jedi Fallen Order, this rocket launch trooper is pretty basic. He has a pauldron and is on that spectacular 2020 body again, but the only reason to buy this one would be for that exclusive bazooka he comes with, which is pretty badass, especially in that gunmetal grey colour. Darth Maul also saw another figure release this year, with this old master look based off the skin from Battlefront 2, and it's genuinely one of the greatest Maul figures we've ever gotten, as the red paint on his face and arms is much bolder, making him pop more, and even though a Rebels version of this character would have been preferred, I'm still happy to have gotten this as I still haven't unlocked the skin yet. Another figure inspired by Battlefront 2 comes in the form of this General Grievous, but he has some extra weathering and battle damage which does admittedly look kind of cool, yet it doesn't make up for the fact that he's still criminally undersized. Unlike this next figure, Darth Malgus, who looks magnificent as he's sure to dominate any shelf, because his size along with the new head sculpt, armour moulds and soft goods all come together to deliver one hell of a deluxe figure. And this one here is just another repaint of a basic B1 battle droid, however I do really like the Republic Commando inspired paint job as it does make these cannon fodder look a little more intimidating and badass. Now the next figure I'm going to talk about is a bit controversial because honestly I'm still not a massive fan of these Delta Squad figures. This Scorch is probably the best of the lot but I still think the usage of the Hunter body was a mistake, as the entire point of a clone commando, especially in the game, is that it's a big bulky reinforcement that stands out amongst the regs due to its size and you just don't get that here. Backpack's cool though. And this is another clone commando that's just a repaint to give it the standard look. But considering how many times Hasbro has repainted this clone commando now, it baffles me why they didn't just give us a brand new proper sculpt to begin with. Like if you're going to make five of these guys and perhaps more in the future, you could have at least invested a little more and given us a clone commando that looks bulky like they should do. It's disappointing for sure, yet I guess this one does get a pass, as even though it's still not accurate, in the bad batch they are slightly skinnier, so I'll allow it but not Scorch, as he's a part of the gaming greats line and the artwork clearly shows his bulky game design, so in my eyes the hate for him is valid. But with that rant over, continuing with more characters from the Bad Bat Season 2, this Hunter based off his new look from the second season is actually really cool. Not only are the colours here bold and vibrant, making this figure really stand out, there's also quite a lot of new moulds used here, which is surprising as he wasn't a mainline release. The Season 2 Deluxe Wrecker is also amazing too, as even though this new armour design may not be as iconic as the original, this version of Wrecker is a massive upgrade from the first one, as this newer one is much bigger and bulkier, which is really nice to see. 
Unfortunately though, I feel like out of the four Walmart exclusive batch figures, Echo is my least favourite, despite the fact there are some new moulds like with that waist cape. Apart from the paint apps, this one doesn't really offer too much that's new and exciting. But my favourite figure of the bunch and the one I think had the biggest improvements made to it is Tech, as not only did the head sculpt look great with the goggles built in, but his helmet too also saw a massive upgrade as the visor can now actually lift up and down, which was a feature sorely missing from the original. And of course, you can't have the bad batch without Omega, Omega, who unlike the rest was actually a mainline release and for good reason too, because this one also serves as a massive upgrade, as the two new head sculpts are both a million times better than the original. In terms of accessories, although we had to ditch Ruby, we saw her bow rescale, along with this alternative folded in version too, which was nice to get. Now, love it or hate it, we do have to talk about the Kenobi show, and starting with the main man himself, Obi-Wan Kenobi Jabim is a decent figure, the likeness is there, it's nice to see classic Jedi looking robes, yet this is far from the most interesting Obi-Wan we've ever gotten. In spite of the fact that the fourth sister had little to no screen time in the show, I think her overall design is really cool, and the alien head makes for a pretty epic figure. Now, Tala may not be the most interesting or exciting character, but it's cool to finally see a female Imperial officer in the Black Series for the first time, although I would have much preferred Dedra. The target exclusive Apo is just fantastic and is debatably one of the best clone troopers in the line as he uses that 2023 clone body we talked about earlier, but includes the 501st markings, albeit the Kenobi show colourings. Another awesome exclusive target received was this Jules End Vader which is just a magnificent figure. The sliced up helmet exposed in that burnt up Anakin head is just jaw dropping, as Hasbro really knocked it out of the park with this one, as they even included more detail like his busted up chest piece and also the back scar too. Based off of the final scenes of the show and inspired by the comics, this Obi-Wan Kenobi Legends Walmart exclusive figure is pretty cool looking as well. I like the white robes and the red goggles included, and I'm glad we finally got that T-16 Skyhopper toy accessory, although there's no young Luke for Obi-Wan to gift it to. However, instead we did see a Force Ghost Qui-Gon Jinn, which is just the 2021 version made up to look like a spirit, and like the others, it does work really well. Now then, this carbonised version of Ned B and a Purge Trooper is just the definition of meh. Although the shiny red and black paint looks decent on the Purge Trooper, I don't know why you'd make a droid like Ned B shiny, because the entire point of his style is that he's an old rusty hunk of junk. Then again, there are worse characters you could have made carbonised. But that's a wrap on the Kenobi figure, so moving on to Dr. Aphra, who is a figure people have been wanting a re-release of for a while now. However, Hasbro did us one better and made a whole new variant as a part of the publishing line, which included this cool new trench coat, as well as this pretty awesome aviator headpiece. Now, Mara Jade is also a character I'm not too familiar with, therefore, despite the figure looking quite good, I wasn't super excited for it, yet I know so many people have been desperately wanting this one for a while, so I'm happy she's finally in the 6-inch scale, and not just that weird Black Series 3 and 3 quarter line. Now, Mike is the last publishing figure I need to talk about, and he's a character from the Scar Squadron comics. And this one is really great, not only because he uses that 2020 Stormtrooper body, but I think the blue accents on his helmet, visor and arm accessory really make this guy unique and helps him stand out. So this year we also saw quite a few Andor figures released, with the first figure in the line being an exclusive of the titular character in his Aldani disguise, which is a pretty solid figure, nothing too special there. But to go with him we also got this Aldani officer, that's actually a really decent figure. Always nice to get more Imperial middlemen, and I really do dig the black look as it provides something different for an Imperial army. As for the Ferex Imperial officer, he's cool but definitely should have come with a riot shield, I'm honestly kinda gutted he didn't. This short trooper is different to the other ones because of his rank, which is shown by these subtle grey paint apps on his chest and shoulders. And I'm not going to lie, I completely forgot this figure existed. The Mon Mothma figure is a textbook traffic cone, it still looks the part and gets the job done, although a Return of a Jedi version would have been way better. I do really like the character of Luthan Rail, this figure is just rather mediocre, it's not bad by any means, it's just the character himself is rather ordinary, so it doesn't make for an exciting action figure. Similarly, Val is another boring looking figure, my favourite part of this one has to be the Space AK-47, even though it's not a particularly Star Warsy looking blaster, I still think it looks sick. And the final Andor figure is just the basic civilian look for Cassian, and although I do like the colours used with the red, greens and blues, it is technically a repack as it was first released in this San Diego Comic Con exclusive would be to EMO, so unless you want to complete the Andor mural, just get the two pack instead. Doc and Dahl was a Galaxy's Edge Deluxe set and is our first official Euphorium Black Series figure, and Hasbro once again knocked it out of the park with this new alien mould, and I can't wait to see it reused for Momar Nadon next year. The Deluxe Book of Boba Fett Chrysanthemum may be lacking when it comes to articulation, however you cannot deny when it comes to looks this figure is truly something else, as its new moulds make it infinitely better than that original piece of shit. <coughs> this year we also got three different variants of Black Robes Luke, 
But the Mandalorian light cruiser one definitely stands out, with differences like the new torso and also the addition of soft goods too. This next figure though is nowhere near as good, as Din Djarin Morak is basically just a head swap of the tank trooper Mayfield, and it's not even a good one at that, because his head looks nothing like Pedro Pascal, in fact this one has been plaguing my local sniff toys for months now, no one wants it. This original HK87 based off of Mando Season 2 is incredible, I love the new moulds and tooling introduced with this one, along with the soft goods too, and I think Hasbro really did a standout job with this droid, alas I just wish it actually came with its staff. Another droid for Mando Season 2 we got was actually R5-D4, and it's nice to be getting an in-scale more detailed version of this little guy, however he is set to release in a 4 pack with 3 pit droids next year, which makes this solar release feel rather redundant. Now the Mandalorian fleet commander may have just been a background character, but this figure is a great addition to any Mando army, as he uses that great new body, and I also like his armor's blue and white colour scheme, which does make it feel clean and fresh. Now look, I get that Ahsoka needed a figure to release with the launch of her own show, but seriously, this is just a repack of that older Ahsoka we've seen so many times already. No soft goods, no new accessories, nothing new to see here. This Shin Hati figure may not be perfect, but I still like it, as let's be honest, it could have been much worse, as the face didn't end up looking too bad. Balin's skull, on the other hand, got done real dirty. Although he looks fine, he's seriously underscaled. Like Ray Stevenson was a behemoth of a man. Balin was this huge, strong mercenary, yet for some reason Hasbro made him the same size as Shin. This Ezra figure is actually quite amazing, as it's literally just his Season 4 Rebels look, but with a live action face, so I'm not mad about that at all. And it was also nice to see the Rebels chopper re-released as well, as he was getting quite expensive. But why not include him in the Ahsoka lineup? Why the Rebels one? Maybe Ezra and Chopper should have traded places in their murals. This new Sabine figure based off the Ahsoka show is just an all around great figure. Head sculpt, the new moulds, the paint apps are all just incredible. Yet for this figure to be so good, she may have taken up a lot of the budget. Could be why the other figures that were in that wave are severely lacking, like Morgan Elsbeth, who despite being our first Black Series Night Sister, I found to be rather underwhelming, although the likeness is really really good. Looking at the fact there's no accessories, it's just disappointing, making it feel like an incomplete release. But not as much as this other HK droid, which is just a repaint of that original one, but in red. And my god, this paint job does not look good. Like, they didn't even bother to paint the visor on, and overall it just looks way too plasticky. Yes, I know the figure is made out of plastic, but you know what I mean, it just looks like a prototype. But out of all the Ahsoka Show figures, the new Harrison Doola is definitely overlooked and is really underrated as I think this is genuinely one of the standouts from the line. Professor Hu Yang Tu is another figure I think Hasbro nailed the look of with his new moulds, yet the tan colouring they used is more reminiscent of his Clone Wars look, rather than his paint job seen in the Ahsoka Show which is more white and pristine. Now I think Landspeeder Luke summarised Marek the best when he said he's a credit collection figure that somehow snuck into the main line. It's a shame because there is a good figure hidden under all of those horrendous paint apps. As for the holiday figures I'm just going to group them all together as I don't really care for this gimmick, although my favourite this year has to be the Ewok, not because it's Christmas related, more so because of the fact it's an Ewok, the others I couldn't really give two shits about. But what's 1000 times better than any silly holiday figure is this Pulsecon exclusive Force Unleashed multi-pack. Although expensive, we finally got Starkiller for the first time, alongside two standard Stormtroopers and some amazing accessories like alternative heads and some epic lightning and force pieces, and as a whole this set is just astonishing, a true masterpiece. And we did also see a solo mainline release of Starkiller 2, which doesn't include the extra accessories, but does act as a cheaper, more accessible way for people to get this long overdue figure. Another deluxe set that was pretty cool was this Luke and Grogu training pack that included this cool new Book of Boba Fett Luke Skywalker with a backpack for little Grogu, as well as some pretty neat world building accessories too. We also saw an additional Book of Boba Fett inspired 2 pack which included Cobb Vamp and also Cad Bane, both of which are incredible figures and it actually makes sense to package these two together. So good job for that Hasbro. Now next up is perhaps the worst release of the year and it has to be this carbonized 2 pack of the Red HK Assassin Droid and also Ahsoka. That's right, Ahsoka. Ahsoka got the carbonized treatment, and I know it makes no sense, it's just such a stupid and shitty looking repaint. Although, what's even worse in some regards is that the shiny HK is actually better than the original, due to the fact it actually got given somewhat of a proper paint job. I mean, this two pack as a whole is just a joke, and I normally like carbonized, but even I think this is too far. Finally, I did not save the best for last, as we are ending on this Din Djarin, Grogu, and Ahsoka free pack, which is nice for people who want to buy all three together, but the only new thing this set includes is soft goods for Ahsoka which she should have come with in the first place. So there we have it, that was my quick review of every Black Series figure released in 2023. So let me know your thoughts and which ones were your favourites in the comments below, but as always thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.
And of course I did end up missing two figures, those being the Holocom Collection, Bo-Katan and also the Mandalorian, which are both technically 2023 releases. I think these hologram figures are pretty solid and useful repaints. I especially enjoy the light up bounty pup that comes with each of them. And when it comes to re-releases, Hasbro should definitely be doing more stuff like this instead of credit collection, carbonized and those shitty holiday figures.